in this name, and <clears throat> he, as a wise man, gets up to say, you don't have to fight this fight. It, it'll implode on his own and, and all of that stuff. And he makes reference to a person that I want to look at and to a certain number here. Um, so one of you guys, if you have it, read it out loud. The book of Acts chapter 7 and verse 6. Acts chapter 7 and verse 6. And yes, put your, your phones on silence if you can, please. God spoke to him in this way. For 400 years, your descendants will be strangers in a country, not their own. And they will be enslaved and mistreated. Just six. Yeah. And then go over to Acts chapter 5 and verse 36. They were, they were going to spend 400 years back in Egypt. And here in chapter 5 verse 36, there's going to be a reference to a certain leader that tried in the days when Jesus was either a baby or just born. Um, he tried to start a movement calling himself some type of Messiah. Chapter 5, verse 36. One of you guys read it, please. Some time ago, Thebius appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, and all of his followers were dispersed, and all came to nothing. This is Gamaliel talking then, uh, and he is making a reference to that uh, idea that this man, Tedeus, gather around 400 men and call himself somebody. <clears throat> and, and when he was killed, though, all of the men that followed him were reduced to nothing. That's what the scripture says here. Now, let's, let's read... Um, in the book of Genesis, um, let's read chapter 32 and verse 6, chapter 32 and verse 6. And I'll make references to those passages uh, uh, because they are stories. Chapter 32 and verse 6. One of you guys read it, please. Genesis 32, 6. <coughs> When the messengers returned to Jacob, they said, We went to your brother Esau, and now he is coming to meet you, and 400 men are with him. I want you to remember the amount of men that he has with him. He has 400. He doesn't come, he's not coming to say, Hello, hi, how you doing? Uh -huh. When you are bringing an army, you want to fight. You want to do something. At least you want to intimidate. And... <clears throat> Let's read one last one in 1 Samuel chapter 22. 1 Samuel chapter 22. And this is uh, David's first uh, group of army, if you like, when he wasn't a king yet. Chapter 22 of 1 Samuel and verse 2. One of you guys read it, please. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him, and he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for this morning. We, we praise you, Father, for the scripture you've given us to study, Father. We pray your anointing upon Oscar, Father. As he divides your word, Father, into our hearts, Father, let it make a difference, Father, in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, the first scripture that I read, I want you to keep your Bibles open there. Actually, the second one in Acts chapter 5. And verse 36, Act 5, Act 5, and verse 36. Keep it open right there. 300 was the number when you wanted a fast reactionary force. The 300 men that followed Gideon. The 318 men who follow Abraham. A fast group that needed a miracle to defeat a vast army. Both Abraham and Gideon had to fight against a superior force. But when you got to the number 400, it was the establishment or the beginning of something. Establishing something. 
you wanted to say there is a new order. We're beginning something. We're going to get in a, go in a different direction. This is the amount of men you have to show. It's like the beginning, like when they're trying to recall a politician and they say you need this amount of signatures. 400 soldiers. So Theodos wants to make himself the Messiah. Historians tell us he was born about the 4, 4 BC. <coughs> 30 years, you know, when, when Jesus was the baby. And he gathered himself 400 men. There is an importance to that. Because he was trying to establish a kingdom on this earth. Theodos was. And Gamaliel is pointing to him. These are followers of Jesus they're talking about. In fact, he told the Sanhedrin and the people of the Pharisees, walk them all out so that we don't, they don't hear the disciples. And then he said this story. There's a guy, now remember, Gamaliel is old enough to have been there. There's a guy named Thaddeus who gathered himself 400 men who called himself somebody. When he got killed, everyone that followed him ran away and they came to nothing. That was his example on trying to say, do not attack these disciples of Christ. He is referring to something that happened in David's life. That was a number that they had. When David was persecuted by Saul, he gathered around all the discontent. And his army, if you want to call it that, was 400, ragtag little group, 400. But it was the beginning, those 400 malcontent were the beginning of the kingdom for David. It was the number with which he will get himself going. <coughs> there will be the story of this other man named Esau. He's coming to meet with his brother and the prophecy or the blessing that had been given to his brother, Jacob, who he stole from the father, was that he was going to, Esau was going to serve his brother Jacob. So Esau brings 400 men that day, his brother and everybody else will realize I'm serving nobody. I got my own thing. I'm establishing something. In all these three occasions, somebody's going somewhere. But there are big differences in how they went about it. When Tildes rose up, he called himself somebody. The first thing that should give you a pause is that Camelio said, not that God called that guy, not that God spoke to him, but he rose himself up. That means he decided, I will be leader. Whenever you look at a position, whenever you're offered something, make sure that it is God the one who's saying that. It is not men who can make you something. And sure enough, it's not you who can rise up to that level. Amen. It is the echo of Satan himself. When he says, I will rise up and go to the mountain of God and I will be God. Men cannot appoint himself. Men cannot give himself those positions. He who sits on the throne is the decision maker. Amen. You can be appointed by a government and that will be recognized on this earth, but it will not be recognized in heaven. You can be appointed by a church, but if the gifting and the calling is not there, it does not matter. Right. You'll make no difference. Even if your church is bursting at the seams, if God has not called you, there will be nothing there but flesh. When David 
came with his 400. He could have self-promoted easily. In fact, they put the very leader of the enemy, Saul, at his feet twice. One time the guy was asleep. And he was whispering in his ear, let me kill him. And it'll be over. You will be king. And he will say, it will not be my hand. It has to be God. What a beautiful statement. I will not grab it. I will ask him to do it himself. And if he has decided, he will take care of it, not me. Talking about patience. There's another seal here also. When Teudas rose up, he convinced 400 men and he said, I'm the Messiah. Follow me. And 400 men followed him. But the moment that he got killed, did you notice what the Bible says about him there? Acts chapter 5, verse 36. Did one of you guys read it? If you have it. <laughs> For some time ago, Theodos rose up claiming to be somebody. Claiming to be somebody. Keep going. A number of men, about 400, joined him. Yes. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. Let me tell you something. If you're building something, Here is a man who has a following. But when, when they killed him, all of his men were dispersed and the movement came to nothing. That was not a movement. That was a pyramid inverted. It was just one man. Like the churches who are based on somebody's gifting. And when that gifting is gone, then they disappeared. Right now, the Christian world is rocking, struggling. Two great preachers from two different streams of the gospel have had a failure. Both mega churches. Not too far from where we are right now. 20, 30,000 people in one church, 20, 30,000 people in the other church, and completely different streams of the gospel and of evangelicals. And now that you don't have that head, the words of Gamaliel will resound. If you take away, tell us what's going to happen to the rest of them. And if you see something implode and explode and go nowhere, then it is more a cult of personality than a real church. That's what's Camellio's argument. This is what he was saying. The tellers of this group right here, the disciples already got killed in that cross. They didn't believe in any resurrection. They just said he's gone. Let's see what happened to these guys. And if you let them be and don't even touch them, and they're nothing, they're going to die and disappear. And if they're not, then it's from God. And here we are. The disciples did not go anywhere. They got dispersed by persecution and went in all kinds of directions, but they sprouted everywhere. <coughs> and you and I are part of that fruit. Gamaliel was right. Christ cannot be stopped. And those who are being called by God cannot be stopped. Even yeah. after you're gone, David had people sitting upon his throne generation after generation after generation because God will not leave something undone. Make sure that you're not appointing yourself and make sure that you're not following somebody who's appointing himself 
for herself. Make sure that what you are doing is not something that is just based on somebody's ability to preach or ability to lead or ability to do organization. A good leader knows how to disseminate God in such a way. Let me speak to where the cross is somehow we cease to be. The moment that one of us is missing, I don't know then what we were doing here. Because Jesus is still here. Amen. Amen. Let me take, talk to the conservatives a little. Should I? They are so zero in on a specific person that if that specific person has moved away from them, they will fall apart. The only one you need is Jesus. Amen. God uses men, yes. But you can remove every man and you still have Jesus. Amen. One greater than Solomon, one greater than Moses. Don't put all, put all your eggs in one basket and think, if I can just get this man in that position, everything is going to be a panacea and a paradise. It's not going to be. Because men cannot fix things of the heart. Gamaliel was profound in his speech on what he gave. Let's read the passage and we'll finish there. Acts chapter 5. <clears throat> Verse 35. One of you guys read it, please. 35? Yeah. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Keep going. Some time ago, Theatus appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, and all of his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. Keep going. After him, Judas, the Galilean, appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all of his followers were scattered. There it is. Keep going. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. Keep going. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop. Amen. With these men, you will only find yourself <coughs> fighting against God. If it's from God, you will not be able to stop it. Amen. I pray that that's true for our lives. God bless you. Amen. Amen.